Hello YouTube peeps and welcome to this video. I mostly do devlogs about my upcoming game called Fireworks Mania, but when I run into stuff from time to time that I have a hard time finding a solution for myself, like in this case playing a sound in a particle system or from a particle position you could say, I do these tips and tricks videos. So this is not a devlog specifically about the game, but more technical how to tutorial tips and tricks video for fellow game developers. So um, let's get into how I make this work. So first let's look at what it is that I, I achieved with this little script. Um, the problem is that it's not so easy to find the solution or find a position of a particle in a particle system. So first of all let me show you the effect here. So I have this battery here, I can ignite it and then I will go over here and I will stand here so you can hear the stereo effect. And let's see, it will fire off something you can hear from the left. And it goes on off at the right. So, that stereo effect is achieved by playing a sound from this position where it goes off and from whatever position over here that it uh, disappears and, and explodes, you could say. So let's take a look. So here I have my battery here and that battery have a particle system. It's just a basic standard Unity particle system. Actually, it has some children under here because it has some sub emitters and stuff like that. But that's not the interesting part. The part is that we have this uh, the interesting thing is that we have this um, particle system here. And then we have this script that I created that we'll dive into right now called Fireworks Particle Sound System. And if you are thinking now, what is this uh, bone sound, down sound, uh, the bone sound, die sound? Um, this is just my way of playing a sound. Here, here. It's a asset called Master Audio that I use to play the sounds, but that's not uh, actually anything to do with the script. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, so, but let's go through this the script here. I will put a link in the description um, to uh, to a, a place where you can find the script as it is here. You might need to take out some of it because it's not relevant. For instance, this explosion uh, physics force effect is something that I you specifically in my game and it won't be included in the script you know this line will but this script will not so you just you need to remove whatever stuff but i think you will manage and you can see how it's done and you can kind of tweak it to fit your needs by the way talking about tweaks uh, if you do something special with this or something improve it in some way or some some other smart thing please let me know in the comments i would like to know and also if you have a problem you can kind of ask in the in the comments and i will try and uh, answer and help you out so let's get into it so first of all we have a reference to a particle system that's the particle system that we actually monitoring you could say we find a reference to it, yada yada yada, and we have this explosion force thing that you can forget about now. What is interesting here is um, actually this part, but this one is just the two sounds I'm playing. This is something master audio specific with this sound group. Again, it's not actually important in this script, this is just the way I play sound. You can play sound in whatever way you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, the interesting thing is actually this one and this one. First of all, the particle system, as I mentioned, and also this dictionary with an unsigned integer and as, as the key, and a particle as the actual value of that um, key in the dictionary. We use this later to keep track of the particles, and we use a dictionary for an easy one-to-one -one lookup uh, via the key. Okay, so let's get to the update here. So this happens every frame. We create a new array of particles with the size of the actual particle count in this um, in this point in time from the particle system. So here we have an empty array with the amount uh, of uh, well with the size that actually is needed to hold all the particles, because then we can pass that array into this method called get particles on the particle system, and that method will populate this array with all the particles currently in the particle system, currently alive in the particle system. Then we call a, me a method called get particle delta, which we'll go into in a moment. But it uh, takes in all the current live particles and it gets back a delta. And this delta is actually just a simple class with two lists: a list of added particles and a list of removed particles in this current frame. And when I have this, it's very easy to do stuff because then I can just loop through all the added ones and all the removed ones, 
and then do some stuff in here. I specifically do some explosion force things and I also, this is my way of playing an, an audio um, in, in this case. And the interesting part is this position thing, because this is actually the magic, you know, for playing it at the right place in the world. So you can you just remove this and do whatever, you, how you play sounds in your game. But anyway, you can see here it's pretty easy. What's added, what's removed, play one sound for added, one for removed, and that's it. So that part is easy. What What is the challenge in this is actually what's going on in this get particle delta. Because this one uh, is the one that was hard to figure out. Um, I would like it to be a little easier on the particle system to do this, but it's actually okay when you when you figure it out. Okay, so I create a new uh, instance of this particle um, delta class. And uh, then I loop through all the live particles that we got in. So remember, this is all the particles that is currently alive in the particle system. So we have an active particle here. Then we try and uh, get the value from this tracked particles dictionary, you remember, up here from the beginning. Um, we try and see if we can find um, that current active particle based on the random seed. And the random seed is the key or the ID of this particle. Um, so we use that as the as the identifier and then we can do a look up here and see if it found and it find it finds it. And in this case it found it and then it goes in and update that particle in this location in the dictionary. And the reason we do it this way is because this active particles and this list of active uh, live particles is a new instance every time. So you can't use update reference to find the same one. You have to use this um, uh, random seed here um, because that's the ID to identify it. And the particles, if you just keep the track of the particle itself, the position, for instance, on that particle is only set once in the frame. And then in the next frame, the, the same particle with the same random seed is a different instance with a new position. So you can't just save all the active particles and then just use the position from that because the position will not be updated. At least that's my findings uh, from this and this is why I do it this way. So therefore I have to put this new instance or this new uh, reference to a new instance of this particle into the same location in the dictionary as the old one had. I hope it makes sense. Anyway. If, it not, if it's not found, then it means that it's a new one, meaning that it should be added to this delta result because this is a new particle. So we add the particle and we add it at the, we add it to the delta thing here. And then we add it to the tracked par uh, particles uh, using the random seed here and put it in to be able to keep track of it the next time and figure out if it removed, is it removed or added, you could say, in the next go. So then we keep track of it here. Down below here we try and keep uh, figure out what has been removed. So we take all the live particle and turn it into a dictionary with the random seed as the key and the actual particle as the value. And we do this for Quiggle look up down here. So we do this once and then we have an updated particle as dictionary. So we have the live particle in a dictionary here where we can look it up based on this random seed, aka the key. And then we do a list of the key in the track particles. So that's the dictionary um, key, dictionary keys as list. Maybe I should rename this to a little better one. But anyway, then we go through all the keys we know from our tracked particles, and then we try and see if that's if that's in the live particle dictionary. And if it's not, then we know that it's removed. You know, it died since the last. Um, uh, game loop or the last frame, it, uh, it it disappeared. So therefore, we can add it to the removed list. We can find the actual tracked particle, and then we can uh, actually remove it from the dictionary. And this way, we have populated this delta result with removed and added particles, which we then return here, and then we are back to the loop here where we can do whatever we want with that information. So this is how I play a sound in a particle system where a particle emits or when it spawns, you could say, and how I play a sound in the position where it dies or disappears. So this is the way it works. Again, this one is the key thing to play at the right position. 
Um, I know I will in the future, I might do a video again like this. This is already the second video about this topic because I improved the script or changed it because I needed the position of where they disappeared to. But I also already know that I also need to actually be able to play a sound through air. So like the sound moves, like moves with the particle. I have an idea how to do that, but I haven't done it yet. So there might be a new video about this topic, but um, later on when I get to that and actually do that. But for now, this is my script and this is what you can use again to um, play a sound in a particle system where a particle emits and where it dies. Hope it uh, helped you and um, again, the script is in the description. If you want to see more video like this, leave a like and uh, maybe subscribe. Uh, I mostly do, as I said in the beginning, do uh, devlogs about my upcoming game Fireworks Mania. So, so I'm not a tutorial tips and tricks channel, it's more like a dev channel or dev log channel about what I actually do. But again, when I find something that is uh, that I had a hard time figuring out or couldn't find a solution to, and I think could be interesting for others, I do this uh, tips and tricks video like this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully I didn't scare all my current subscribers that is actually here for the devlogs away. Now you have a little chance of seeing how stuff works behind the scenes and how I actually achieved this effect of playing this sound. So that's it for now. Have a nice day and hope to see you in the next video. See you.